our hearts in prayer. Father, we humble ourselves before you, anticipating the arrival of your word. This morning, your spoken word, given through me, your servant, by your Holy Spirit. And Lord, as, you, as we hear that word this morning, may it prepare our hearts for the coming of your greatest word, the word made flesh, Jesus Christ, who came into the world and is coming again. In his name, amen. I should have turned in your Bibles with me this morning again, as we did last week, to Luke chapter 1. We're continuing that uh, story, continuing our theme for this Advent season on Christmas journeys. And as, as you remember last time, we looked at the first journey of the Christmas story last time. We looked together at the journey of the angel Gabriel from heaven to the little town of Nazareth to share the message and the good news of the birth of Jesus to come. And now we continue right after that visit with another journey story that we see in Luke chapter 1, 39 to 45, which is Mary's visit to her relative Elizabeth. So let's hear God's word together from Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 45. We read there in God's word, At that time Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. Brothers and sisters, the word of the Lord. Well, dear family in the faith, I mentioned last time that the Christmas season is a time for traveling. It's a time for, for different journeys to different places. And I mentioned last time that when I was a kid, I journeyed as well as a lot of you have uh, with your families in the Christmas season. As we took those trips across the state from Ann Arbor to Coopersville and Michigan uh, and Muskegon to uh, have those family Christmas parties, I remember that those gatherings were not only fun and not only exciting because of wondering what Grandma and Grandpa had for us grandkids under the Christmas tree. As I look back on those gatherings now, decades later, I realize that those family gatherings for me were also encouraging as to who I was and who I am. After two to three hours on snowy roads, it felt great to get out of the car and finally head into the homes of my grandmas and grandpas. We'd be greeted with hugs and kisses, not only from grandma and grandpa, but also from the uncles and aunts who were there. We'd hang out with the cousins and play games, and then we'd play with our Christmas toys after the gifts were opened. I realize now that those family gatherings were important because they encouraged me not only who I am as a member of the Ben and Zitema families, but also who I am as a child of God. Especially remember my grandpa Zydema leading us in personal devotions. And as was true of a lot of people and men from his generation, he often had similar phrases and words that he would say in his, in his prayer over, over devotions. And I remember those, those prayers well. Those meals and devotions gave me a powerful sense of belonging to both my earthly and my heavenly families. Godly families is such an important way for followers of Jesus to discover their identity and their calling in Christ. They're vital sources of encouragement as we walk our journeys of life and faith. 
As we continue our Advent series on Christmas journeys, we continue to look at the major journeys of the Christmas story and focus together on what we can learn from them. Last time, as I said, we reflected on Gabriel's journey from heaven to earth to bring the message of the Messiah's conception and birth to his future mother Mary. And there we are reminded that God will go to any length to tell us the good news of his son Jesus on our life's journey. And today we focus on Mary's journey from Nazareth to Judea and on the encouragement that she received from her relative Elizabeth. Well, Mary journeys from Nazareth to the hill country of Judea to visit Elizabeth. Luke records in verses 39 and 40, At that time Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. Shortly after, the heavenly messenger Gabriel journeys from heaven to Nazareth to tell Mary that she will be the mother of the Messiah and the very Son of God. Mary makes plans to journey to visit her relative Elizabeth. And we don't know how Mary is related to Elizabeth. She could be a cousin, an aunt, or another relative. Now, a trip like this is highly unusual for a young betrothed woman like Mary to make. Typically, a woman pledged to be married would live in seclusion in her own home until her wedding day when she would finally be taken from her home by her bridegroom to their wedding chamber and to their new home together. A young woman in her situation certainly would not normally take a trip on her own to a town some 70 miles away. Mary plans this journey herself, likely with the reluctant permission of her parents. When Unity Christian's football team went to Ford Field a couple weeks ago for the state championship, and turns out his, uh, Matt's ride was not able to, to go like he was planning, he wanted to drive himself to, to Ford Field. And, his mom and I were a little uh, nervous about that, so instead I got in the car with him and with Laura and his friend Josh, and we went to the game together. And I can only imagine how Mary's parents felt when she said that she wanted to take this trip all the way from Nazareth down to Judea on her own. Mary's parents likely arranged for a trusted relative to go along with her on her journey. And that brings up the question, why does Mary suddenly decide that she wants to go visit her relative Elizabeth? Well, I believe it has everything to do with what Gabriel had just said to Mary. When he said, even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. Mary has just been told that she will be the mother of the Son of God, the promised Messiah, which is the sort of news that takes a lot of time and a lot of encouragement to process. Mary has also been told that her own relative, dear old Elizabeth, has already been chosen and enabled by the Almighty Lord to have a miraculous conception despite her infertility and old age and is now already two-thirds of the way through her pregnancy. No doubt Mary wants to find out for herself the truth of the angel Gabriel's words about Elizabeth which will also confirm to her her own miraculous conception, pregnancy, and birth that she will soon experience. And right along with that, Mary wants and needs the encouragement of the only other woman in the world who would understand her circumstances and her calling as the only other mother of that time blessed with a miracle child from the Lord. The woman chosen to be the mother of the herald of her son. Mary probably also wanted to spend some time away from her little town of Nazareth, where prying eyes would stare and wagging tongues would talk 
about this betrothed young woman whose abdomen was beginning to grow with that little life within her that they think shouldn't be there. Mary journeys as quickly as she can, the 70 miles from Nazareth to the village in the hill country of Judea where Elizabeth and Zechariah have made their home. Many priestly families like Zechariah and Elizabeth live in the Judean villages surrounding Jerusalem outside the city but close enough to travel there quickly to carry out their priestly duties in the temple. Zechariah last served in the temple some 15 months or so before when the angel Gabriel came to him in the holy place in front of the most holy place and told him that he and Elizabeth would become the parents of John the herald of the Messiah. When Mary arrives at the home of Elizabeth and Zachariah, she calls out a warm greeting to Elizabeth. Probably, Shalom, Elizabeth. When the sound of Mary's greeting reaches Elizabeth's ears, she feels a six-month-old baby John jump up in her womb. Instantly, Elizabeth senses that her unborn son leaped for joy when he heard the sound of the voice of the Messiah's mother. Zechariah had been told by Gabriel that John would be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. The Holy Spirit gives unborn John the ability to sense the presence of God's Messiah even when still in Elizabeth's uterus. Babel, babies are able to hear sounds in the womb at 18 weeks old and are able to respond to those sounds in the womb at 25 or 26 weeks old. With John's joyful leap at Mary's voice, he makes his first prophecy. Did you know that? With his jump for joy, he points both his mother Elizabeth and relative Mary to the Messiah. With his jump for joy, John is already starting to live out his calling to bring Israel back to the Lord, their God. At the same moment, Elizabeth feels the love and power of God's Holy Spirit pour into her heart and give words to her mouth. God's call to both mothers is confirmed as they greet and encourage one another as the mothers of the Son of God and John the Baptist. Elizabeth cries out to Mary in a loud voice, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Elizabeth's spirit-filled greeting is astonishing and meant to be a great encouragement for Mary. It's normal in the first century in Jewish society for a younger woman to take the initiative to greet an older woman of higher status like Mary did when she greeted her older relative, Elizabeth. It's very unusual for an older woman to greet a younger woman of lesser status like Elizabeth does. Elizabeth is addressing younger Mary as superior because she is the mother of my Lord, in her words. Elizabeth is filled with both joy and humility that the very mother of God's son should bless her with a visit to her own home. We don't know if Mary corresponded with Elizabeth by mail before she came to visit. We don't know if Mary had said anything to Elizabeth previously about her divine calling. It may well be that the Holy Spirit has revealed Mary's calling to Elizabeth, just as Gabriel revealed Elizabeth's calling to Mary. John's leap and Elizabeth's words of greeting certainly would strengthen Mary in her calling as the mother of the Lord. It would be a powerful attestation of God's call for Mary to be the mother of God's Son, even more so if Mary had said nothing about the angel Gabriel's visit and message to her. Elizabeth shares with Mary that her unborn baby John's leaping over the nearness of the Messiah already growing in her own womb has occurred. 
Moses' law demands that a matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. So the Holy Spirit, John, and Elizabeth all testify to Mary that she truly is called by God to be the mother of the Lord, the Messiah. As Mary sees Elizabeth and receives her, her blessed greeting, she no doubt spots another reason to fully trust Gabriel's word to her. The enlarged abdomen of her relative carrying her precious six-month-old boy. Mary's ears and eyes reinforce the truth of Gabriel's words. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. Elizabeth then shares a second Holy Spirit-inspired blessing with Mary in verse 45. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her must be accomplished. Elizabeth blesses Mary's faith in the angel's message that she would be the mother of God's son. Elizabeth's blessing to Mary reminds me of the Apostle Paul's encouragement to the Thessalonian church. In 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13, where the Apostle says to the church, And we also thank God continually, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted not just as a human word, or as in Mary's case, just an angelic word, but as it actually is, the word of God. Mary is blessed because she has accepted Gabriel's word as God's true word to her. God has blessed Mary with three powerful witnesses to the truth of his word to her. His Holy Spirit, unborn John, and Elizabeth. And Elizabeth, too, is blessed by Mary coming to visit Luke tells us in Luke 1, verse 56, that Mary stays with Elizabeth for about three months and then returns back to Nazareth again. Mary is likely able to stay with Elizabeth, helping her around the house and lifting her spirits during her final trimester of pregnancy. Mary probably stays long enough to witness little John born and perhaps even circumcised eight days after birth. Mary likely sees with her own eyes God's promise to Elizabeth and Zechariah become reality. And so she can be prepared for when God's promise to her also becomes reality. As we continue our journeys of faith and life, having our natural and spiritual families with us can be such an encouragement. When Sherry, Matt, Laura, and I moved from 12th Avenue Church's Parsonage, our home of nearly 11 years a week ago Saturday, it was such a blessing that my mom and dad and two of my brothers, Scott and Tim, could help us move all of our stuff to our new home on Rosewood. Thanks to their help, we were able to move all of our belongings in just two trips in a few hours. As a church family, We've been able to encourage one another through our personal challenges. And now as we prepare to close our beloved church at the end of the month and year. I'm thankful for my church family that have encouraged me and my family with their prayers, words, and notes of encouragement, helping my family pack our belongings for our move, meals prepared and delivered to us and those who have made me aware of other churches looking for pastors. I'm grateful for the efforts made to continue our longtime friendships and relationships with one another and Bible studies and get-togethers and now also a Facebook group page that I'm going to be officially announcing next week but is up and running. I'm grateful for the pastors and office bearers of Classis Georgetown who prayed for our church at their special meeting this past Thursday to vote on the release of my call and the transfer of Pastor Jim's and my credentials. Just like I was encouraged as a boy to participate in family meals at Christmas 
They reminded me of my special place in my family. We're blessed today to encourage one another at our family meal, the Lord's Supper. Mary and Elizabeth both were encouraged in their callings to be the mothers of Jesus and John as they spent time together. We can be encouraged in our callings as we spend time with one another in worship, fellowship, prayer, and at our family meal, the Lord's Supper, today. How has your God-given family encouraged you on your life and faith journey? May we experience the encouragement of natural and spiritual family today at communion and every day as we commune with one another and with the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we are so grateful that as we walk on life's journey, we do not walk alone. As we have focused on at the beginning of this series and now today, we know that you are Emmanuel, God with us, and you certainly walk with us, but along with you, you also bless us with earthly and spiritual family members who also walk with us to encourage us as we walk forward together. And dear Father, we are grateful that we can encourage one another just as Mary and Elizabeth encouraged one another in their callings. And Lord, thank you that we can do that at family gatherings at Christmas, at worship services, and in times of fellowship as church family members and in times of Bible study and prayer. And Lord, we thank you for all the ways that we can walk with one another as we move forward with you further into this Advent and Christmas season and into the future that you have planned before us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.